Hey, welcome back to Zesty's Corner. So, I just kind of want to talk about UWVCI uh, 3 and how it is on Linux and Mac because this is something that still comes up. So, right, this video um, that you're looking at right now, well, the video in the video, right? Um, right, uh, you know, I'm looking at the Wine, you know, version. I released the video about it as well. Um, so, a lot of people are confused, um, saying, hey, you know, like, this isn't that great, uh, it doesn't work, or I'm still having troubles. Uh, the big thing I try to explain to people is, uh, so, you know, I pulled up the code here. Uh, let's see, let me type in wine. Here we go. So, you don't need to specifically use wine. Um, I wrote in a lot of different items, uh, right? So, I, you know, check, I'm doing checks for wine. Um, I even check for steam. Um... There's, I use crossover box wine, uh, Lutris, uh, play on Linux. Uh, honestly, basically anything you could really think of under the sun. Um, you know, D, D, sorry, DXVK. I'm really bad saying acronyms. Uh, React OS, uh, Wine Tricks. Um, I mean, I even check for Wine X, Wine Pro slash Proton. Um, and then I even have a check here to see if you're running this off of like a virtual box or whatever, right? So it should be VMware virtual or virtual box, Parallels, Zen, KVM, uh, I think it's Bive, right? Um, so I an open text, right? There's a whole bunch of items in here I'm checking for Hyper V, um, even Docker, and all this is important because this is how um, I specifically use these functions to, to tell me if you are running this outside of just native windows um, which yes technically virtual machines do not count as native windows it is just very close right it's it's still you know um you're still virtualizing it or emulating right that leads to some issues so i have all that uh done here specifically just so i can figure out if um you need extra support um because windows native windows will do things specifically with this in a um in a certain way. Everything else will have some troubles, uh, which is what this is for. And I have it set up this way in hopes that all the external tools will work. Right, um, if we go back to that video, I'm not going to play through it, but, um, you know, this like towards the end here. Uh, yeah, cool, I found it. Uh, there's a problem with WIT. Um, and that's, you know, like the WIT tool itself, right, if you just kind of look it up. Uh, this, you know, if you come here, technically, you don't need to use UWVCI. Like, if you have problems like that, um, you already, like, everything we package mostly for you, you then will just need to maybe convert something, which you can just download with and do it yourself because there's more than just Windows on here, right? You have all these different versions. Uh, the problem, though, is when you are making a program, you know, you have to be very conscious of... Of I guess the people using it and how that looks. So, right, coming back to UWVCI, um, you know, people complain, hey, it's only on Windows, blah blah blah. Um, if you didn't know, the whole name for this is um, Ultimate Wii U Virtual Console Injector All in One Windows Platform Foundation. Uh, WPF is Windows Platform Foundation. Uh, believe it or not, that um, means only when it's on Windows. Right. Um, so because of that, because foundationally, right. Um, it's on it's on Windows. The only way to make this work is, or to work on other platforms, would be to change the foundation. But you know, if you think about anything like that, if you change the foundation, um, you have to redo everything, right? You know, think of it this way. Um, let's say you wanted that you want your house to be on the beach or something, right? But right now, your house is on top of a mountain. You you, you can't just pick up the house and move it, right? Um, yeah, you, you can't do that. Uh, you have to start, you, it would be cheaper and easier for you just to make the whole house again on the beach, which is what we're doing for, you know, a uh, version four. Um, also, the code base in uh, version three is pretty, pretty bad. Um, there's just a lot of, you know, uh, things that don't make sense, like this injection. Yeah. This one file that's a class is, oh, I don't know. Um, 2,800 lines of code about. Um, and let's look at this model, you know, an object. Oh, how, how, many, uh, how many lines of code is this? Um, 3,500. So for my non-programmers out there, uh, that does not make sense. A model should look more like a... I actually don't even know if there's a good model here to even show you. 
Um, I mean, sure, that might... Uh, sure, fine, close enough. Th this would be... Um, I guess this is an okay object. Uh, this is what a model will look like. You normally just have uh, parameters. Uh, you, and you have getters and setters. And then you might have some functions on there. That's it. But in this case... It does way more than it needs to. Like, look at this. We are we are generating repo IDs. We are downloading things. That doesn't make sense. You you would not do this. These would, this should be extracted and modularized. Um, the problem though is, I tried to do that before, but the biggest problem comes to be um, there's a lot of things that are just ingrained in each other too deeply that you can't easily move them apart. Like, like the Oh, was it, was it? I think it's in the inject one. Uh, let's show you. Main view. Oh, no. Let's try that again. Main view model. Yeah. So, um, I guess let's say, how many times does this word come up? Main view model. 147 times. Because you'll see, basically, in every function, we pass the main view model. Um, you, you No, you don't do that. <laughs> um, and, and because of how other things are set up, we have, like, was it, uh, is it, like, called download wait? I think, yeah, we have a download weight, which this item is passed around to a lot of different things. Um, once again, this is being passed into an object. That's kind of weird. We have um, the custom, is it custom message? This is also thrown into other things as well. Uh, basically, you want things separated. So if things are happening in the front end, you know, things that you, people can visually see, then that is in a very specific spot. That is a view or something like that, right? Maybe a controller. Uh, it really just depends. You want that all that to be like the business side to be on one side. Then everything that's like the back end that's like, you know, processing things will happen somewhere else. Um, but this is all mixed together um, where it's just really, really hard. Um, like, you know, mvm.message, anytime this appears, that means that's being displayed to the user. Um, same thing with the progress. Anytime this thing's being called, um, which is insane. Uh, yeah, there was just no easy way to do this. I spent, oh man, this was two years ago. I think I spent two, maybe 300 hours trying to just pull this apart. And even when I did, um, and it worked for me, it didn't always work. Uh, that was actually version 3.99, I think is what that version was called that I made. Um, let's see. Yeah, because it was like back in July or something for a few years ago. Yeah, okay. Yep. So in August. Yeah, so I redid all of this. Um, the idea was to give better support to a bunch of different people. Um, but people were running into issues with 3.99. Um, so then I just basically backported a lot of the changes I made into um, this version, which is 3.f. Um yeah, it doesn't, there's a lot of things that we've missed out on by me doing that. Um, yeah, I, there, there was just a lot. Anyway, I'm trying to just, you know, get on a little rant here. Um, anyway, so another re another, another uh, problem is these tools, right? These are all tools that are external to UWVCI. Um, for it to, for the program to be able to work on all platforms, we can't have external tools like this. It all has to be in-house. You know, EXEs, that doesn't run native on, on, um, on anything that isn't Windows, right? Um, so that, that's, that's a big other issue. Um, but anyway, I just kind of wanted to talk more about why, um, why people have issues and like what things they could do to make things better. I also kind of expect for people to be like on Linux to be willing to, you know, do more things, I guess, to before they s complain there's an issue. Um, you know, I, I used to use Linux a long time ago, and I remember if I just wanted to watch like a single video on my computer, I would have to like, was it like use app get to download like the right package and then I, or the right files, so then I could then build the item from source. Uh, then I could run things, and I would have to run things everything out of the terminal. Um, like there wasn't much things in the GUI. Um, technically, like, I know now Linux is, like, kind of, not really everywhere, but, you know, like, the Steam Deck has it, so a lot of people just kind of jump in, expecting it to be kind of easy, and there's different flavors of Linux now uh, that do make things easier, but you, when, you, when you go to Linux, right, um, the whole idea is that it's supposed to be very, like, modular and uh, very, like, disconnected from things, 
So you normally need to put in the effort, right? Think of it as being like an automatic car from like a manual. You drive an automatic, so you don't need to, you know, deal with some of the extra headaches. You can just drive the car. With manual, you have to worry about like what, you know, what gears you're in, how to, you know, upshift, how to downshift. Um, you know, like there's silly things that you have to think about, right? In, in a manual car, there's no park, right? You put that in neutral, then you put up the, um, the handbrake, um, right? <laughs> anyway, um, I just kind of wanted to go over like expectations, um, kind of explain things so it makes sense. Um, and I can make a video talking about like why UWBCI uh, 4 is taking so long. Um, but yeah, just, just wait or help that right. That's, that's it. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks.